Just by becoming angry, you have already lost. A person who cannot control their emotions cannot control their life either. The renowned military leader Napoleon once said, A man who can control his emotions is greater than a general who can conquer a fortress. If we want to achieve greatness, we must first learn to control our emotions, although this is not easy. Many people, though appearing seasoned and experienced, lose control of their emotions when faced with irritants, resorting to cursing, arguing with others, and even physically lashing out to the point of causing injuries, which is very dangerous. When we become angry, the fire of ignorance blazes within us. When a person gives rise to the mind of anger and delusion, they have already lost. Those who cannot master their emotions will never be able to master their lives, leading to a loss of reason and a deeper descent into trouble. Today's video will talk about the consequences of anger and how to help you not be angry. After listening to it all, you will definitely never be angry again. I hope you find this knowledge useful. One, anger leads to many problems. Anger, often seen as a fleeting response to frustration, holds a far more sinister potential to disrupt lives and deteriorate relationships. Take a moment and consider the story of Zhang Fei from the Three Kingdoms period, a talented general whose inability to manage his anger led to his tragic demise. Despite his skills, Zhang Fei's temper ultimately made him ineffective a stark reminder that raw talent without emotional control is futile. This tale is not just a historical anecdote. It mirrors challenges in our modern lives. Imagine a contemporary scenario, a skilled project manager known for their expertise, but also for a volatile temper. During a crucial meeting, frustration boils over regarding an unmet deadline. Words fly, morale plummets, and the team's unity begins to fray. The manager's anger not only strains professional relationships, but also impacts their personal well-being, echoing Zhang Fei's fate in a modern setting. In the iconic film The Godfather, a profound line advises, never let anyone outside your family know what you are thinking. This wisdom highlights the dangers of wearing your emotions on your sleeve. Those who are quick to anger and open with their frustrations can alienate others, making them vulnerable and often misunderstood. Anger also takes a toll on your health, which ancient medical texts acknowledge, noting that all diseases arise from energy. This energy, when negative, can harm not just the mind but the body, affecting the liver, lungs, and even cardiovascular health. Have you ever noticed how being angry makes you feel physically and emotionally drained? How it can turn potential allies into adversaries? Reflect on these effects and ask yourself, is it worth holding on to this anger? What could you achieve if you directed this energy towards positive change instead? In embracing the Stoic philosophy, we learn the power of perspective. Stoicism teaches us to detach from our immediate reactions and understand the deeper implications of our emotions. By recognizing the triggers of anger and stepping back to assess them with clarity and calmness, we can mitigate conflicts and foster healthier interactions. As we conclude, remember that anger, while a natural emotion, should not dictate our actions or define our lives. By mastering our responses to anger, we not only enhance our personal and professional relationships, but also improve our overall well-being. So, next time you feel that familiar surge of frustration, take a deep breath, step back, and choose a response that aligns with the person you aspire to be. What strategies will you implement to ensure that anger does not overpower your better judgment and lead you astray? Let this be a pivotal moment in your journey towards wisdom and emotional resilience. 2. If you hate someone, they have won over you. In the rich tapestry of life, where every thread intertwines with complexity and challenge, understanding the futility of anger can be your gateway to a serene and fulfilling existence. If you hate someone, they have won over you. Echoes the wisdom of the ancients, reminding us that 
true strength lies not in overt displays of power, but in the quiet resolve to not succumb to anger. As men, particularly those of us journeying through the middle chapters of life, from our thirties into the golden years of our sixties, we learn that anger is a luxury we can ill afford. It isolates, distorts, and ultimately leads us astray from our goals and well-being. Anger's destructive potential can turn calm seas into stormy waters, making sadness and frustration swell and surge. Yet, it's imperative to remember, as the Stoic philosopher Seneca once advised, the greatest remedy for anger is delay. Patience shields us from the immediate burns of fiery emotions, teaching us that our reaction to provocation is within our control. No one can inflict pain upon us unless we permit them to do so. Our perceived injuries are often self-inflicted wounds of the mind. Consider anger not as an invader to be battled, but as a passerby to be acknowledged with compassion and restraint. Quickness to anger indicates a misuse of our inner resources, akin to squandering time, but even more detrimental because it depletes our energy and attention. Adopting a stance of love and peace toward the world despite its provocations, cultivates a resilience that hate can never erode. It does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop, Confucius wisely stated. And this is particularly true in mastering one's emotions. The irritations we feel towards others often reflect unresolved issues within ourselves. When anger arises, it eclipses our quest for truth and propels us into self-defense mode, severing connections and amplifying loneliness. The challenge, therefore, is not merely to suppress anger, but to understand its roots and address them with clarity and calm. As we navigate through life's trials, be it through judgment, isolation, or disappointment, our responses define us more than our hardships do. Understanding that reactions to external actions are within our control empowers us to redefine our experiences. The behaviors of others do not have to dictate our emotional landscape. This realization liberates us from excessive expectations and the inevitable frustrations they breed. An angry man may raise his voice in the illusion of strength, yet his closed eyes symbolize his true weakness. The refusal to see and engage with the world as it is, not as he wishes it to be. In moments of potential conflict, kindness emerges as the most profound retaliation. It disarms the adversary and elevates the spirit of the bearer abiding by the principle that if it does not harm the community, it need not harm the individual, fosters a broader perspective where personal grievances give way to collective well-being. Showing someone the error of their ways through composed, constructive dialogue is far more effective than any outburst could ever be. In the quiet reflection of our later years, we come to appreciate that the heat of anger provides no warmth, only the cold aftermath of regret. Let us then embrace the Stoic view to transform our challenges into channels for growth and self-reflection, adhering to the age-old wisdom that maintaining peace within is the truest form of strength. As Marcus Aurelius once counseled, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This Stoic mindset, when woven into the fabric of our daily lives, not only enriches us but also those we touch, creating a legacy of calm in a world too often consumed by storms. 3. Being upset is a choice and you should make a smart one. Anger, often described as a fierce tempest within, can indeed change the course of your day or even your life. Have you ever found yourself so consumed by irritation or fury that you lose track of your own happiness? Imagine this. Every minute spent in anger costs you a whole 60 seconds of peace and joy. Now consider the wise words of the Buddha. Holding on to anger is like grasping a hot coal with the intent of throwing it at someone else. You are the one who gets burned. How often do you find that the initial spark of your anger seems justified, yet the aftermath leaves you with nothing but regret and exhaustion? Anger is, intriguingly, one of the few emotions that demands us to act, to judge, to penalize. Yet, what does this really achieve? The Greek philosopher Aristotle once noted, Anybody can become angry, that is easy, 
but to be angry with the right person and to the right degree and at the right time and for the right purpose and in the right way, that is not within everybody's power and is not easy. It is a subtle art, the control of one's temper, and not everyone masters it. But why do we cling so fiercely to our resentments and grudges? Is it possible that in our grip on anger, we are actually afraid of confronting deeper, more painful issues within ourselves? Consider for a moment the idea that anger doesn't always stem from what happens to us, but rather from our thoughts about what happens when someone insults you or undermines your efforts, your natural response might be to retaliate or to harbor ill feelings. However, Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher, challenges us with a transformative thought. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This perspective empowers you to choose your response to be the master of your emotions rather than a slave to them. What freedom lies in the realization that no one can make you feel inferior without your consent? Now, let's explore the notion that most anger comes from unmet expectations. We often expect the world and the people in it to behave in a certain way, and when reality falls short we feel betrayed and let down. But what if you could adjust your expectations, not lower your standards, but align them more closely with the imperfect nature of human beings in the world? Would you then find yourself less frequently angry? Anger, as Mark Twain wisely put it, is an acid that can do more harm to the vessel in which it is stored than to anything on which it is poured. Have you ever noticed how personal grievances can escalate into something ugly, affecting not just your mood, but also your health and relationships? Leaders and visionaries throughout history have recognized that true power lies not in a loud voice or a clenched fist, but in the ability to remain calm in the face of provocation. Nelson Mandela, after his long imprisonment, famously chose forgiveness over bitterness, a testament to the strength and nobility of choosing peace over conflict. So, what is the smart choice when you feel the heat of anger rising within you? Delaying your reaction can be incredibly effective. Taking a moment to breathe, to step back, can transform the impulse to react into a decision to respond with wisdom. It's not about suppressing your feelings, but about understanding them. Why am I angry? What is this emotion telling me? How can I address this issue constructively? Remember, it is not anger that is dangerous, but the lack of control over it. As you navigate through your day, encountering inevitable frustrations and conflicts, ask yourself, is my anger serving me, or is it merely a loud echo of my fears and insecurities? By choosing to respond with clarity and calm, you are not only protecting your peace, but also cultivating a strength that will guide you through life's most challenging moments. Your journey through anger is not just about avoiding confrontation or suppressing your emotions. It is about understanding the roots of your feelings and redirecting that energy into actions that reflect your highest self. Isn't it time you took back control? Not just of your emotions, but of the life you are creating every day? Let's continue this conversation and explore how we can transform our responses to ensure that our emotions serve us, rather than the other way around. Thank you for your presence in today's video. You've taken the first step towards unshakable calm. Drop a comment number one below to affirm your commitment to a peaceful mindset. Don't go yet, there's more enlightening content on the way. 4. When you hate someone, you hurt yourself more than they hurt you. When you harbor feelings of hate, it's like drinking poison and expecting the other person to suffer. Remember this the next time someone provokes you or stirs up your anger. Take a step back rather than mimicking their behavior. By reacting with anger, you cloud your judgment and hurt yourself far more than anyone else can. It's essential to remember, as someone once wisely said, you are defeated by whoever angers you. Imagine a day at work where your boss criticizes you unfairly. It's easy to react impulsively with frustration or defensiveness. But consider this. By becoming angry, aren't you giving them control over your emotions? It's like handing someone else the remote control to your feelings. Instead, why not choose to act out of your inner strength and calm? You possess the power to not be affected negatively by others' actions. Each day, strive to remain detached, present, and serene. 
This consistent practice will diminish your reactive responses, allowing you to maintain your peace. When anger arises, it's often sudden and fierce, catching us off guard. However, if you fill your life with understanding and love, those harsh feelings, anger, guilt, resentment, begin to dissipate. It's crucial to acknowledge that while everyone experiences negative emotions, we have the choice not to act on them. By recognizing your anger as it emerges, you gain the ability to observe it objectively, as if stepping outside yourself, and thus it loses its grip on you. Holding on to anger is akin to clutching garbage. It's unnecessary, harmful, and frankly, nonsensical. The wise choose to let go, while only fools cling to such destructive baggage. Why should you allow past grievances to prevent you from loving freely in the present? It's a significant self-sabotage to suppress negative emotions rather than experiencing and then releasing them. Awareness itself can bolster positive emotions and dissipate the negative ones. Avoiding your feelings only leads to more pain, not less. Consider the moments when minor annoyances arise. They are fleeting, aren't they? If you choose not to focus on them, they dissipate quickly. This is a vital lesson in emotional management. When anger tempts you to make rash decisions, pause and acknowledge that this state may cloud your judgment. Ask yourself, does this situation truly warrant a reaction? Often, you'll find it doesn't. Every interaction, even with those you might dislike, offers a learning opportunity. Instead of responding with similar negativity, try understanding or even loving your perceived adversaries. Such actions can transform enemies into friends, or at least, neutral parties. Beat the bad people with love, as the saying goes. Extend generosity to those less fortunate, and honesty to those who deceive. These acts not only counteract negative emotions, but also elevate your spirit. Now, let's take a moment to reflect with a question. Have you ever noticed how letting go of anger can make you feel lighter and more free? Share your experiences. How did it change the situation or your day? In conclusion, embracing a life filled with love and understanding is the ultimate antidote to anger and other destructive emotions. Remember, the person most harmed by your anger is often yourself. Learning to smile at your anger, to greet it like an old acquaintance with calm detachment, allows you to live with peace and happiness. Anger comes and goes, but your inner tranquility and wisdom are always available to guide you through the storms. Embrace these truths and watch as your life transforms into a more joyful and fulfilling journey. 5. Angry people will often give up what's best. In the depths of our human experience, anger often emerges as a formidable opponent, casting shadows over our best intentions and leading us astray from the paths of wisdom and calm. It's essential to grasp that succumbing to anger is not merely a fleeting lapse in judgment, but a relinquishment of what's genuinely beneficial for us. As the Stoic philosopher Seneca once remarked, anger, if not restrained, is frequently more hurtful to us than the injury that provokes it. This profound insight beckons us to view anger not as a protector, but as a peril, masquerading as the guardian of our deepest sorrows and insecurities. Consider the scenario where anger persuades us to forsake sleep in the heat of resentment. The greatest speech given in anger is often one we regret profoundly. Anger serves as a solitary confinement, locking us away with our bitterness and forgotten rationale. In understanding this, we can begin to unravel the threads of anger, tracing them back to their roots in greed, delusion, and the simple yet profound misunderstandings that disrupt our peace. But anger's reach extends beyond our personal turmoil. It reflects a broader misunderstanding of our reality and ideals. It is not strength that harbors anger, but weakness, a surrender to the lesser angels of our nature. When faced with provocation, our true might is demonstrated not through retaliation but through restraint. As Marcus Aurelius, another Stoic sage, advised, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength.
In the tapestry of modern life where the pace is relentless and the stakes high, it is easy to let anger dictate our actions. However, the wise recognize that giving in to anger is akin to yielding our knowledge and clarity. The next time you find yourself on the brink of anger, remember that what truly defines your intelligence and character is not how easily you are provoked, but how you choose to respond. Counting to four or pausing to reflect can act as simple yet powerful shields against the folly of anger. Integrating these stoic principles into our daily lives demands continuous effort and mindfulness. It involves recognizing that the triggers of our anger are less significant than our reactions to them. Each instance of anger offers a lesson in self-awareness and an opportunity for growth. It's a chance to turn away from the precipice of reactionary outbursts and towards a path of stoic calm, where the storms of the mind are acknowledged, but not allowed to overwhelm. In this ongoing journey, let us strive to detach from the immediacy of our emotions and embrace a perspective that values serenity over discord. Let us not be those who think others harbor negativity towards us, when in reality, they scarcely give us a thought. Let our legacy be one of peace and rationality, where anger is recognized as a momentary guest in the home of our soul, not the master of it. For in the grand design of our lives, the ability to remain composed in the face of adversity is the truest strength, echoing across our interactions and aspirations. 6. Have faith in time. Imagine you're navigating through a thick fog where visibility is nearly zero. It's similar to those moments when anger clouds your judgment, isn't it? Sometimes we find ourselves riled up over trifles, perturbed by things prematurely, or agitated by matters that shouldn't bother us at all. Renowned philosopher Seneca once said, The greatest remedy for anger is delay. Indeed, the wisest among us recognize that we have limited time and energy. They invest these precious resources only in matters that truly merit attention. Understanding that often, our distance from understanding others fuels our frustrations and unnecessary disputes. Consider this. When anger escalates, the consequences can become more harmful than the anger itself. It might seem as though your rage adds a surge of necessary energy into your interactions, but in reality, this energy is as blind and destructive as a storm tearing through a serene landscape. The key then lies in maintaining a tranquil mind, essential for viewing situations through multiple perspectives. Just as wine may enhance our spirits but obscure our true selves, anger might make us feel momentarily powerful but ultimately hides us from our own inner truth. When anger strikes, remember to shift your focus from people to problems, from excuses to solutions. It's easy to target our frustrations at individuals, but what does this truly accomplish? As Marcus Aurelius, another Stoic philosopher, pointed out, how much more grievous are the consequences of anger than the causes of it? If anger is a storm, consider your breath your anchor. By focusing on your breathing, you can weather this internal tempest and prevent it from wreaking havoc. Here's an interesting thought to ponder. If you find yourself furious, what would happen if you waited just 10 seconds before responding? In moments of intense anger, try counting to 100. This practice might seem simple, but it's profoundly effective in regaining control over your emotions. Remember, once you allow hatred to settle in, your opponent has already won. Love, however, fosters pride, not just in yourself, but in your connection to the world around you. It's far simpler to choose hatred, but ask yourself, isn't it more rewarding to cultivate love? This dialogue isn't just about controlling anger. It's about transforming it into a tool for personal growth and freedom. Whether you find yourself in bonds or in power, your true freedom comes not from your external circumstances but from your internal state. If you are good and just, you are free, even if you might seem constrained by life's circumstances. Conversely, if your spirit is shackled by malice, you are confined even in the most regal of freedoms. Now I invite you to reflect. When was the last time you felt angry, and how did you respond? 
Could viewing the situation from another's perspective have changed your reaction? As we journey together through these thoughts, remember that the path to wisdom is not through forceful conquest, but through gentle realization and serene persistence in face of life's tempests. What steps will you take today to see through the fog of anger and find clarity in your life? 7. Anger makes us feel so alone. Anger often makes us feel isolated as if we're navigating through life's challenges completely alone. It's a destructive emotion that can leave us bereft of meaningful connections. Consider this. When anger surges within you, it's akin to riding a wild horse, unpredictable and dangerous. Have you ever noticed that the most heated moments often lead to regrettable decisions? In these instances, anger can poison our judgment, ensuring that actions taken are more likely to fail. It's crucial to recognize that danger is indeed only one letter away from anger. When we dwell in anger, even trivial matters can seem monumental. It's said that anger is one's worst enemy, but remaining composed is your best defense. Remember, no one else can truly hurt you unless you permit them to. The moment you think you are hurt, you really are. But here's a thought. Anger isn't necessary. Life will undoubtedly throw frustrating situations at us, yet it's our response that truly defines the outcome. I make a conscious choice not to react in anger. By not responding with heightened emotions, you protect your peace. Anger obscures our ability to see clearly, akin to looking through a fogged lens. When it arises, it's important to acknowledge it, look it straight in the eye, but then move beyond it. If you manage to hold your temper, imagine how you might avoid days, if not weeks, of sorrow. Have you ever reacted in anger only to find that it didn't solve anything, but rather added to your troubles? Consider the story of Emma, a project manager known for her quick temper. During a critical meeting, she exploded over a minor mistake made by a team member. This not only escalated tensions in the room, but also strained her relationship with her team, affecting morale and productivity. Over time, Emma learned to pause and reflect on her emotions, realizing that understanding her triggers and responding rather than reacting could prevent many stressful situations. This transformation didn't happen overnight, but through consistent effort, Emma found that her meetings became more productive and her team more cohesive. Now reflect on your own life. When was the last time anger helped you achieve a positive outcome? When we let go of anger, we open ourselves up to understanding more about our own inner workings. Every irritation we feel towards others can actually be a mirror showing us our vulnerabilities and insecurities. It's often not the insult but how it makes us feel about ourselves that stirs up anger. Losing hope can leave us in a constant state of frustration, but imagine if we could channel a fraction of that energy into self-love and understanding. Perhaps then, our inclination to react in anger might diminish significantly. So next time you feel anger rising within you, ask yourself, what is this really about? Can I look at this situation differently? This shift in perspective might just be the key to not only keeping your peace but also deepening your understanding of yourself and enhancing your interactions with others. By learning to manage our anger, we learn to free ourselves from needless suffering. It's a journey of self-discovery that requires patience, insight, and a willingness to change old habits. Through this, we might just find that the serenity and resilience we develop are far more rewarding than the fleeting satisfaction anger might provide. Remember, the ability to remain calm in the face of adversity is a superpower that can lead to profound personal growth and harmony. Let's embrace this journey together, fostering a community where wisdom leads the way to a more thoughtful and fulfilling life. 8. Anger is not a good feeling, so wise people never show it. Imagine a scenario where, in the heat of a dispute, someone insults you. The instinct might be to react with equal venom. But what if instead you paused, counted to four, and allowed the wave of anger to pass? This simple act of pausing is a powerful testament to self-control, reflecting a mind as steady as a flame in a windless space. By choosing not to respond in anger, you're not only preserving your peace but also preventing the situation from escalating. It's akin to reducing pollution. 
where anger is the pollutant, disrupting the serenity of your environment. Anger, when left unchecked, often inflicts more harm upon us than the initial cause of our irritation. Hence the pursuit of serenity should not be about suppression, but about understanding and channeling this potent energy constructively. Consider meditation, a practice that brings profound calm and clarity. As we meditate, our minds stabilize, revealing our true selves and the peace that comes from deep realization. It's here, in the tranquility of a still mind, that we find the strength to act without attachment to outcomes, embodying the essence of stoic calm. Furthermore, the Bhagavad Gita teaches us to perform our duties with devotion, without attachment to the results. This is the true nature of yoga. Detachment here does not mean disengagement from life, but rather engaging fully without being swayed by personal gain or loss. This philosophy encourages us to maintain our composure, not only in adversity, but also in prosperity, enabling us to approach every situation with a balanced perspective. Our beliefs and thoughts shape our reality. He is what he thinks he is, reflects the profound impact of self-perception on our identity and actions. By fostering positive thoughts, we not only enhance our own well-being, but also project this positivity outward, influencing our surroundings favorably. Today's actions and choices become the foundation of our future, turning each moment into a potential step toward fulfillment and happiness. In every today lies the potential for a dream of happiness and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Engage with the present with your full attention, as it is the only moment we truly own, the very life of life. Through actions devoid of selfish motives and dedicated to the greater good, one aligns with the Supreme Lord untouched by sin, like a lotus flower by waiter. In this state, one finds true freedom and enlightenment. As we navigate it through life's challenges, maintaining a stoic calm amidst the extremes of pain and pleasure, honor and dishonor, we align closer to our highest self. Knowing this self as both a friend and an adversary teaches us the essential truth of our existence, that we are the architects of our fate, capable of both creation and destruction. This knowledge empowers us to choose wisely, act graciously, and live profoundly. In sum, mastering anger and nurturing a composed demeanor is not merely about avoiding conflict but about embracing life's potential to its fullest. By understanding and applying these principles, we cultivate a life of peace, purpose, and profound satisfaction. 9. Anger Leads to Illusion In this moment, as you listen, consider the profound impact that mastering your emotions, particularly anger, can have on your life. Anger, as it arises, often clouds our judgment leading us into a labyrinth of illusions that distort our perception of reality. It blurs the lines between what is and isn't true, making it incredibly challenging to think clearly. As Marcus Aurelius wisely observed, how much more grievous are the consequences of anger than the causes of it? So when we succumb to anger, we lose our grip on reason, and without reason, we are prone to fall into chaos. Imagine mastering endurance the art of weathering life's storms without letting despair take root. This discipline is tough to cultivate, yet undeniably rewarding. Those who achieve it are not swayed by fleeting hardships. They see through the superficial injustices and cruelties that often provoke anger. Instead, they cherish virtues like brotherly love, kindness, justice, and charity. These qualities are not just lofty ideals, but practical tools to enhance personal well-being and the well-being of those around us. Now take a moment to reflect. Have you ever found clarity and solitude in the quiet moments of pause? The ability to choose one thought over another, especially under stress, is a testament to a clear mind. I often remind myself, and perhaps you might consider it too, to speak only when certain that my words will improve upon silence. All ancient schools of philosophy, from the Cynics and Epicureans to the Stoics and Skeptics, grappled with human suffering and confusion, each diagnosing the root cause as misguided judgments and beliefs. 
They agreed that ignorance leads to misery, not the circumstances of life themselves, but how we interpret them. Socrates famously stated, to know is to know that you know nothing. That is the meaning of true knowledge. His point? Our miseries are often self-inflicted by our misconceptions. These philosophies offered more than just criticism. They promised healing through the transformation of our values. Imagine finding wealth in simplicity, patience, and kindness. How might your life change if you viewed every interaction, whether with friend or foe, as an opportunity to practice these values? What if you could accept the world as it is and extend a hand of peace to everyone you meet? Consider Taoism, which teaches us to appreciate the art of existing in harmony with the universe. It emphasizes living in the present, where eternity meets our finite experiences. Here, in the now, is where we touch the infinite. Isn't it liberating to think that the moment of now is not a point in time but a bridge between past and future? a space where change is the only constant. This idea of change being inherent to life itself is echoed in the concept that life is an art, and the mastery of living is adapting gracefully to the ever-evolving tapestry of existence. As you listen, ponder this. What changes might you make to your own value judgments to align more closely with the flow of life? How might this alignment transform your experience of anger or frustration? Remember. As you navigate through life's complexities, the power of your thoughts and beliefs can shape your reality. The journey isn't merely about avoiding the pitfalls of anger, but embracing a philosophy of life that elevates your existence to one of peace, clarity, and resilience. Are you ready to embark on this transformative journey? How will you begin to incorporate these timeless principles into your daily life, starting today? 10. Enjoy the way things are. In our journey through life, understanding how to harness contentment with what we have can transform our existence. When you realize that everything you need is already within your grasp, you unlock a profound sense of freedom. Your perception should be guided by your own senses. See what is truly before you, listen to the sounds that nature intended, and speak your truth without the filter of societal expectations. It's essential to liberate your thoughts from the confines of what others deem appropriate. Remember, if you let external desires dictate your thoughts, you're not only relinquishing your freedom, but also doing a disservice to your own potential. By allowing yourself to think, feel, and act independently, you open up a pathway to personal growth and liberation from the chains that society can impose. Consider this. Life is like a garden where your dreams are the seeds. The nourishment you choose, be it worry and fear or hope and optimism, determines the growth of these seeds. Watering your aspirations with positivity will cultivate a garden of success, while succumbing to negativity will only foster weeds that choke your potential. It's crucial to always seek opportunities to convert challenges into stepping stones towards your goals. Balance is key. Combining strength with gentleness can help navigate the rough waters of adversity. Knowing when to push forward and when to yield is akin to mastering the art of sailing against the prevailing wind. Reflect on this scenario. Imagine a young entrepreneur whose startup is facing severe financial difficulties. Instead of succumbing to despair, they look for innovative solutions turning obstacles into opportunities. By adopting a mindset of resilience and adaptability, they not only overcome these challenges but also pave the way for future successes. This story exemplifies how shifting perspectives can lead to profound changes in our approach to seemingly insurmountable problems. How often do you find yourself fixating on the immediate impact of a problem rather than its root cause? It's crucial to dig deeper and understand that often our troubles are symptoms of a deeper issue. Acknowledging our limitations is a strength not a weakness. In contrast, the real folly lies in being oblivious to our own blind spots. By addressing the core issues rather than just the surface symptoms, we set the stage for lasting change and deeper understanding. As you reflect on these thoughts, ask yourself, what are the weeds in your garden of dreams? 
What steps can you take today to nurture your aspirations with hope rather than fear? Each day offers a new opportunity to reshape our destiny, to strengthen our resolve, and to soften our approach where necessary. Remember, the strongest among us are those who have learned not only how to endure but also how to grow from every experience, however bitter it may seem at the time. In summary, embracing what we have, nurturing our dreams with optimism, maintaining balance in the face of challenges, and addressing the roots of our problems can radically alter our perspective on life. These principles don't just help us manage anger. They empower us to live with a sense of purpose and peace. What will you choose to water your dreams with today? 11. To master yourself. In an age where the constant pursuit of external validation seems to dominate our lives, the ancient wisdom of Stoicism reminds us of the importance of internal mastery and self-knowledge. Epictetus, a sage of Stoicism, eloquently stated, No man is free who is not master of himself. This profound insight underscores a foundational principle. True power lies not in dominion over others, but in mastery over oneself. To master yourself is to unlock a resilience that withstands the unpredictable storms of life, much like a tree that bends with the wind but does not break. Understanding oneself is akin to peeling back the layers of an onion. Beneath each layer, lies deeper insight and greater clarity about our true desires and fears. By embracing the natural flow of life's changes rather than resisting them, we cultivate a sense of peace and acceptance. It is futile to grasp at the wind of certainty in the ever-shifting landscape of life as the Taoist philosophy suggests. The moment we try to capture it, it ceases to be what it was. Like a good traveler, we must learn to journey through life with openness rather than rigid expectations. This openness extends to our interactions with others. When we stop comparing ourselves to those around us, we find a unique kind of freedom. Respect and admiration from others come naturally when we are authentic and content in our own being, not striving to be superior. However, self-comparison often traps us in a cycle of inadequacy and envy much like gambling with our self-worth on the line. Whether it's a game played for small stakes or high risks, the pressure of what we stand to lose can cloud our mind, causing us to forfeit our inner peace. Moreover, our thoughts and perceptions can act as barriers to true understanding. When preoccupied with our interpretations and judgments, we block direct experiences of the world which are crucial for genuine knowledge. A thought, once it has taken hold, can obscure our learning path with its biases and distortions. Therefore, fostering a mind open to unfiltered experiences allows us to see more clearly and learn more deeply. Acts of kindness and warm words not only foster connections with others, but also build our inner strength by reinforcing our values and humanity. These actions create a ripple effect, enhancing mutual respect and affection among people. In contrast, Allowing our material possessions and external achievements to dictate our worth leads to tension and anxiety. This misplaced focus diverts us from our true source of strength, our character and self-knowledge. In conclusion, the essence of mastering oneself lies in the graceful balance between acceptance and growth, between being and becoming. As we navigate through the vicissitudes of modern life, let us hold fast to the wisdom that mastering oneself is the pinnacle of true strength and freedom. By fostering a profound connection with our inner selves, we pave the way for a life of fulfillment and tranquility, undisturbed by the external chaos that surrounds us. 12. If you lose your peace of mind, you will fail at everything you do. Imagine a world where anger no longer controls you, where your peace of mind is unshakable, no matter the chaos around. Picture yourself navigating life's ups and downs with a serene calmness like a steadfast ship cutting through a stormy sea. How, you might ask, can one achieve such a state of equilibrium? Well, let's explore this together. If you've ever felt overwhelmed by anger or frustration, consider the wise words of the ancient Stoic philosopher Seneca, who said, Anger, if not restrained, is frequently more hurtful to us than the injury that provokes it. Reflect on this. 
When has losing your temper ever truly served you well? More often than not, when we lose our peace of mind, we falter in everything we do. It's like trying to see through a fogged lens. Nothing is clear, and every decision becomes harder to make. Now, envision a man of true bravery. Not the kind that shows in acts of heroism visible to all, but the bravery that lies deep within. This man does not swerve from his path regardless of whether others praise him or deride him. His calmness is his fortress. Consider for a moment what it would mean to embody such resilience. What could shake such a person? Indeed, external commendation and criticism become irrelevant when one is unsure in self-assurance and tranquility. Think about the simplicity of purpose in this approach. In life, like in nature, everything has its role, its function. Just as a beam used to breach a city wall is useless in mending a small hole, so too can oversized reactions be ineffective in solving minor issues. And just as the horned owl can spot the minutest details at night, but fails to see the broad landscape by day, we sometimes focus so intently on trivial disturbances that we lose sight of the bigger picture. I challenge you now. How often do you find yourself trying to control what is simply beyond your grasp, attempting to teach the unteachable? It's like trying to instruct the seasons on when to change. Instead, the courageous, those truly brave souls, are not those who seek to control the external chaos, but those who master their internal responses. They are brave not in their capacity to alter the world, but in their resolve to not let the world alter them. Stoic philosophy teaches us that real bravery does not come from conquering external challenges, but from conquering the turmoil within. It doesn't promise external rewards. It strengthens us from the inside. Like a craftsman with wood or an artist with metal, we must work with what is inherent to our nature. And our true material is our own spirit and character. Now, let's ponder this together. What could your life look like if you embraced this kind of inner bravery and peace? How would your daily interactions change if you viewed each challenge as an opportunity to reinforce your inner calm, rather than a battle to be won? As you reflect on these questions, remember that mastering oneself is the greatest of victories, as Plato once proclaimed. Every day gives us a new opportunity to practice this philosophy, to turn our trials into triumphs of the spirit. Let this be your journey, where you learn not to avoid the storm, but to dance in the rain. 13. Anger is a killer. Anger is often likened to a silent killer, an internal poison that undermines our peace without a visible trace. Think of anger not as a weapon wielded against those who have wronged us, but more like a bent blade that turns against its wielder. It's a corrosive acid, eating away more at the vessel containing it than anything on which it is poured. As the wise Seneca once said, anger, if not restrained, is frequently more hurtful to us than the injury that provokes it. Every moment of rage costs us sixty precious seconds of tranquility, stripping us little by little of our capacity for joy and reason. The proverbial clenched fist can never partake in a handshake. It can only signify defiance and aggression. Conversely, an open hand invites connections, embodies forgiveness, and fosters hope. Love triumphs over anger, hope outshines fear, and positivity overcomes despair. In the tempest of our emotions, it is essential to recognize that anger serves no constructive purpose. It does not resolve a conflict, but ignites it, fooling a cycle of retaliation and remorse. Anger often begets more anger, setting the stage for a relentless storm that can extinguish the very fire of our intellect and humanity. You will not be punished for your anger. You will be punished by your anger, Buddha wisely cautioned, highlighting the self-destructive nature of this fiery emotion. From personal experience, the repercussions of yielding to anger and hatred are profound and far-reaching. These dark companions often lead to the very outcomes we most dread, isolation, resentment, and a crippling dependency on those we have alienated. It is a curious paradox that the same fervor that fuels hate can sometimes mask itself as a perverse form of love, intense, yet ultimately harmful. We might consider, instead of flaring up in anger, 
to express our pain through tears. Crying can cleanse the soul and soften hearts, whereas anger often causes wounds that fester and scar. Anger is not a testament to strength. It is rather an admission of despair and vulnerability. The full spectrum of human emotion is not limited to joy alone. Life in its truest form plays out across the entire keyboard of emotions, from the lows of sadness to the highs of happiness. Understanding this, Aristotle reminds us, anyone can become angry. That is easy, but to be angry with the right person to the right degree at the right time, for the right purpose and in the right way, this is not easy. Furthermore, while anger might be an instinctive reaction embedded in our very DNA, meant to rally us against threats, it often becomes misplaced, wreaking havoc where none is needed. It is crucial to discern between the anger that protects and the anger that destroys. As we navigate the intricate web of human relations, let us heed the lessons of those who have tread this path before us, recognizing that the flames of anger we stoke today might well consume us tomorrow. In an age where every word can be amplified and every emotion scrutinized, it behooves us to wield our expression responsibly. Critical words, though perhaps justified, can inflame situations unnecessarily, perpetuating cycles of retaliation that can span generations. The choice is ours. To perpetuate a legacy of bitterness, or to cultivate one of understanding and reconciliation. By reframing our perspective on anger, by understanding its roots and its fruitless outcome, we equip ourselves with the tools to not only manage our own emotions, but also to influence those around us positively. In doing so, we make our world a little less hostile, a little more forgiving, and a lot more hopeful. 14. Being angry means letting other people's mistakes hurt you. Imagine this. You're walking through life burdened by the errors of others, their mistakes causing your heart to swell with anger. Now picture a world where you could shed that burden, where anger doesn't hold you captive. How liberating would that feel? Being angry means letting other people's mistakes hurt you. But what if you could step beyond this, embracing serenity instead? Consider the Stoic philosophy, where wisdom lies not in a reaction but in measured response. Seneca once said, The greatest remedy for anger is delay. Imagine applying this pause, this thoughtful delay in your everyday encounters. Would you then react differently? As you navigate through life, remember that the future holds no sway over the serenity of your present mind. You are equipped with well-honed tools, reason, resilience, and understanding that guide you through the challenges of the now, be it physical pain, loss, or even the turmoil of war. It's true, adverse events befall even the wisest among us, yet it's not the event itself but our perception of it that controls our reaction. The fool sees a setback as a calamitous tide, overwhelming and fearsome as it first appears. However, the wise remain unmoved. Their initial shock, a mere ripple, quickly settles back into the calm sea of rational thought. They hold steadfast to the belief that these visions, these fears, are but illusions, no more substantial than shadows. Epictetus famously remarked, it's not what happens to you but how you react to it that matters. Reflect on this as you face life's battles. Like a seasoned soldier, you must stand guard over your thoughts and emotions. Life commands a vigilance akin to war. There are guards, scouts, and frontline soldiers. In your role, how will you serve? Will you let the chaos of conflict dictate your actions, or will you command peace within yourself? Every moment, every breath is a choice. Will you choose to let fleeting disturbances unsettle you? Or will you let them pass like clouds on a windy day? Life flows seamlessly around us. It does not pause, does not wait. So, why should we spend our precious moments caught in the snare of anger? Now I invite you to ponder. What situation recently tested your patience, and how might you address it differently with the wisdom you now hold? By exploring this, you engage not only in self-reflection but also in a transformative journey where anger no longer holds the reins and wisdom guides your chariot. Let us walk this path of understanding together, embracing the stoic virtues that elevate our spirits and our lives. 
The life of each person is what the art of living works with. B1. The art of living effectively is grounded in mastering ourselves rather than attempting to control the world around us. Imagine your life as a canvas. Every choice and response you make is a stroke of paint on this canvas. It's vital to derive our actions from wisdom using clear, direct language that transforms into tangible actions. The essence of happiness, then, isn't found in lofty words or complex metaphors, but in the straightforward application of wise principles to everyday life. Consider the dissonance when individuals study philosophy as if it's merely a corporate skill, only to live in a way that contradicts the ideals they espouse. Authenticity in living according to one's philosophical insights is not only commendable, but essential. What you go through doesn't matter as much as how you go through it. This quote underscores the idea that life's ultimate test is not our circumstances, but how we respond to them. You might consider every day as potentially your last. Thus, every thought, word, and deed should be deliberate and meaningful. The true battleground for good and evil lies within the choices we make, not external circumstances beyond our control. We often fear imagined scenarios more than reality, suffering more in anticipation than in actual hardship. Mastery over oneself is akin to conquering the world, for our greatest challenges often stem from our internal struggles. Reflect on this. How often have we exacerbated our problems by replaying them in our minds? By focusing solely on what we can control, our thoughts and reactions, we arm ourselves with strength and resilience. Now, let's bring this into a contemporary context. Imagine you're in a heated meeting at work, where tensions are rising, and the urge to react impulsively grows stronger. It's easy to let anger take the wheel, however, remember, only certain types of men can afford the luxury of anger. Is it worth sacrificing your peace over a moment of heated emotion? By stepping back and choosing to address the issue rather than attack the person, you transform conflict into a constructive dialogue. Engage your energy in seeking solutions rather than justifying excuses. As it's often said, you cannot be angry and laugh at the same time. Choose to approach life with a lighter heart focusing on solutions and laughter rather than anger. In conversations, whether with friends or foes, strive for honesty and transparency. Make it as easy to share a difficult truth as it is to keep it to yourself. In understanding who you are, let go of who you think you are. A person committed to ethical living places greater value on truth than on public opinion. Listen more than you speak. Remember, we are equipped with one mouth and two ears for a reason. What often hampers action propels progress. Obstacles in thought become pathways to solutions. Avoid making promises you cannot keep and resist the urge to speak in anger, as words spoken in heat are often regretted. When anger rises, think of it as a signal to refocus on productive action, not as an excuse for destructive outbursts. Let's ponder this. How might your day change if you viewed every irritation as an opportunity to practice patience and every disagreement as a chance to cultivate understanding? In embracing these practices, you'll find that anger becomes an unnecessary burden, one that you can choose to set aside. By focusing on personal integrity, active listening, and proactive problem-solving, you open a pathway to a life marked not by conflict and anger but by peace and productivity. This approach doesn't just alter your own experiences. It can transform your interactions and relationships, offering a model of engagement that invites others to join you in this more thoughtful, deliberate way of living. Imagine being in a place where anger is a thing of the past, where understanding and clarity replace confusion and irritation. Have you ever paused to consider the incredible power of discernment? The ability to identify and separate the aspects of life we can control from those we cannot is a fundamental skill that can lead to profound peace and happiness. Now, think about this. What elements of your life are within your control? What decisions can you make that influence your happiness? Consider the wise words of the Stoic philosopher Epictetus who said, It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it, that matters. 
This sentiment is at the heart of our ability to find tranquility. The true measure of our happiness comes not from the external events that befall us, but from our internal responses to them. In seeking virtue for its own sake, we find a contentment that is not swayed by fear, hope, or external forces. Instead, it is a happiness born from our own actions and choices. Now ask yourself, what does it mean to do well? The good in our lives is largely under our control, shaped by the choices we make, informed by a universal understanding of the nature of the world. This good is not just about adhering to moral principles, but also about the practical application of those principles in everyday decisions. Even in the eyes of the divine, the optimal use of our rational thoughts is seen as something beautiful and vital. As the philosopher Marcus Aurelius once remarked, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. The most significant and beautiful endeavor we can undertake is to focus on what we can influence and to relinquish the rest to the universe, which operates on its own terms, beyond our control. But what happens when a person lacks understanding of their own nature or the nature of their environment? If someone doesn't grasp the fundamental truth about who they are, the world they inhabit, and their relationship to others within it, how can they effectively use reason to shape their desires and actions? Without this foundational knowledge, people can become lost, metaphorically deaf and blind to the realities of life, leading to misplaced blame and chronic dissatisfaction. So, how can we apply this understanding to our lives? By embracing the fact that we are the architects of our own emotions and reactions. Things in themselves do not disturb us. Rather, it is our thoughts about these things that create turmoil. By training ourselves to distinguish between what we can change and what we must accept, we cultivate a resilience that is both liberating and empowering. Reflect on these ideas. Are you focusing your energy on things you can control? Or are you allowing your peace to be disturbed by things beyond your influence? How might your life improve if you redirected your attention to where it can truly make a difference? As you contemplate these questions, remember that the journey to understanding and self-control is continuous. The more we practice discerning what is within our power, the more adept we become at navigating life's challenges with grace and equanimity. It is in this practice that we can truly say, I change what I can and accept what I cannot, finding peace in both the effort and the acceptance. By embracing this philosophy, you might just discover that anger and frustration are no longer your companions replaced instead by insight and calm. How will you choose to move forward with this new understanding? B7 in a world that often feels tumultuous and unpredictable, the quest for personal peace can seem like an uphill battle. Yet, understanding that life is inherently filled with unavoidable challenges can be the first step toward profound serenity. It's empowering to realize that our happiness isn't just handed to us. It's something we actively create through simplicity and gratitude, and it's far more attainable than we often believe. As Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic philosopher once said, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Living true to one's beliefs and ideals forms the cornerstone of a fulfilled life. Wisdom, that ever-reliable guide, helps navigate the tough decisions and choices we face daily. Indeed, it is during times of adversity that the greatest lessons are learned and our character is tested. As we strive for happiness, it is crucial to remember that it is through virtue that such joy becomes sustainable. Day by day, the practice of self-discipline helps refine our actions and thoughts, allowing us to find contentment in the modest, the mundane. Gratitude is a powerful mindset that turns what we have into enough and more. It teaches us that relinquishing the grip on negative emotions and the continuous effort to detach from materialistic desires paves the way to an unshakable inner calm. Living in the moment becomes not just a practice but a sanctuary, helping us to embrace life's inevitable changes and adapt with grace. In the face of difficulties, resilience emerges not from evasion, 
but from enduring and evolving through them. Concerns about factors beyond our control only lead to unnecessary stress. True happiness is self-sourced, independent of external approval or circumstances. Living in harmony with nature and its cycles prompts a balanced life, one that is reflective and in tune with the environment. Self-evaluation is not just a tool, but a pathway to personal growth, urging us to live honestly and uphold integrity in every action. Simple pleasures often provide the most authentic sources of joy. The ability to recover from setbacks is fueled by resilience, an understanding that life's constant changes require humility and flexibility. There's a unique beauty in simplicity and nature that, once appreciated, can lead to a profound appreciation for life. Moderation in all aspects of life ensures that we maintain balance, preventing excess from clouding our judgment or dictating our happiness. As we navigate the complexities of modern life, it is wise to remember these principles. They are not just philosophical ideals, but practical approaches to living well. Incorporating these practices into our daily lives not only enhances our personal peace, but also strengthens our relationships with others and with the world around us. In the continuous flow of life's ever-changing circumstances, the wisdom to remain grounded and the courage to uphold one's values are what truly define resilience and contentment. Remember, as the saying goes, this too shall pass, reminding us that life is a series of phases, each offering its own lessons and opportunities for growth. Embrace them and you'll never be overwhelmed by anger again. Imagine this, you're on a journey, one that leads to an unshakable sense of peace and an understanding so profound that anger becomes a distant memory. How, you might ask, can such a transformation occur? The answer lies in embracing the present moment, recognizing the inevitable reality of death, and fostering a profound patience in the face of life's challenges. By appreciating life's simpler pleasures and focusing inward, we begin to cultivate a deep self-awareness. Take a moment to consider the wise words of Marcus Aurelius, a staunch advocate of Stoicism. You have power over your mind, not out today events. Real is this, and you will find strength. Stoicism teaches you that our will is our most potent tool against adversity, enabling us to maintain self-discipline across all facets of life. As you delve into self-reflection and gratitude, how does your perspective shift? Can you see the beauty in striving continually for virtue? The essence of my life's philosophy is to live in harmony with virtue, striving each day to surpass my previous self. My desires and emotions are regulated, I own my actions, and I see challenges as opportunities to gain strength. Inner peace is my most treasured possession. It is constant and invaluable. Guided by wisdom, every decision I make is infused with purpose and significance, emphasizing compassion, justice, and fairness. I face the inevitable changes of life with calm acceptance. Living in the now, I acknowledge death as a natural part of life, letting patience cultivate tranquility within me. My integrity shapes my moral compass, and it is my character, not material possessions, that defines me. Resilience and willpower are my tools for personal transformation. I value friendships deeply applying wisdom in my choices and judgments. With disciplined consistency, I approach each obstacle as a learning opportunity, constantly evolving. Continuous self-examination propels me forward while moderation maintains my life's balance. Accepting mortality enriches my existence, bringing peace of mind through patience and honesty. Again, my character defines my identity, not the things I possess. Now think about how these principles can apply to your life. When was the last time you paused to reflect on your own virtues or the quiet strength that lies in patience? How might your life change if you saw every hardship as a stepping stone to greater wisdom? Engage with these thoughts, explore them, and you may discover that anger has no place in a life lived with such awareness and integrity. As you reflect on these ideas, I encourage you to ask yourself what virtues do I wish to cultivate and how can I align my daily actions with these values?
Thank you for watching. If you found value in today's video and want to manage your anger effectively, make sure to hit the like button and share this video with someone who could benefit from it. Don't forget to subscribe to Stoic in Your Life and click the bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. Your support helps us keep creating content that makes a difference. See you in the next video.